new seats. In you go! Come on! Uh, 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 what is... What? What is this place? Where am I? A microphone? How convenient! <laughs> you, you okay, Simon? Yes! Yes! It appears that I'm in some sort of jail. Yeah, it's been in here a month or so now, right? Just You look pretty good for it. Not bad, we've had a change of clothes. Yep. That's good. Like you had a shower. Hot drinks. Well. Hot drinks? Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they, they do some good service here. It's not bad, it's not bad. Almond milk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they did say that they were going to put nut milk in yours. It's a bit salty. So, this week, we all have watched the Umbrella Academy. In October 1989, 43 women around the world gave birth. None of these women had been pregnant when the day first began. How much do you want for it? I have adopted six children. Gifted with abilities far beyond the ordinary. I give you the Umbrella Academy. Does anyone wish to speak? It was a monster. <laughs> Should we say what it is? The whole concept of the Umbrella Academy is it's like the X-Men, but Professor Xavier has paid the parents, taken the kids from them as they were babies, um, and basically abused them. He doesn't directly like abuse them or anything, but just he doesn't care about the kids' well-being. Is more just... They've got a job to do. And he wants them as like a crime fighting team. But the job that he has in mind for them is to save the world at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he thinks that they need these super, super kids. But that's like the, the first minute of the show. Now it zooms forward like 20 years and each one of them is broken in some different way. Yeah. They all have some level of daddy issues yeah. or other problems. One's now a drug addict. One lives on the moon. One's lost one's, their kids. One's dead. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. one's been missing for like 12 years. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. 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 So the, the one died. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. And so now. Rip in peace, Ben. <laughs> so they all, they all come back together because uh, their father has died. And this is literally the opening of the show. Yeah. And it's now that, and they've not seen each other in, you know, 10 years, 12 years. Yeah. Each one of them mm -hmm. slowly left over a period of time the Professor Xavier's school of, you know, drug addict <laughs> and, you know, emotionally damaged superheroes. And now they, they've come back and... Then it is 10 episodes of them arguing with each other about daddy issues. Pretty well, much. Trying to stop the world, but they're not sure how the world ends. They know that it happens in like a week. But they're not in a particular rush to, to sort it out by a well, of it. Well, they've got more important things to figure out. Like, right. Like getting hold of some drugs, yeah. stealing things to get the money for the drugs. Yeah. Well, <laughs> also, um, they don't all know the world's going to end in a week. Uh, one of them knows the world's going to end in the week. And, and this, it, this is one of my biggest problems. He doesn't this immediately show. tell everyone. I'd say 90% of the plot of the show comes from characters withholding crucial information yeah. from each other and then revealing it a few episodes later just mm -hmm. so you can keep this padded out nicely enough. Yeah. Because that causes a nice amount of conflict and um, they don't all have like the same goal. Because otherwise, if they all worked as a team, it'd be boring. Well, but instead you have people doing dumb stuff when you're like, why aren't, you, why aren't you focusing on the bigger issues here? Why are you still arguing about like, well, I used to be the number one in the team, but I was number two and I wanted to be number one in the team. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like, why? Was why that are you, you doing an impression of Diego? Yeah. Number two. His superpower is throwing dag... Wait, no, it isn't. It's holding his breath. That's actually his superpower. He is the Kraken, and he can hold his breath for as long as possible. What? Huh? Yep. Now, there that, was that, one moment... That did there not was, come there across was, in the show. Yeah, there was one brief moment that it's mentioned on the show, and 
It's not focused on because it's not actually important or relevant. That's not the most useful power. No. No. I assumed it was he can throw daggers well. Well, they like s- that's his thing. It's that is his thing, but that's can, not actually that's his not superpower. His he can yeah. throw stuff and control where it goes. Yeah, but that's apparently just a skill he's learned. Wait, being able to throw. There's a, definitely knife. a scene. Uh, I know. I know. It makes no of a sense. A knife flying and it turns, turns like record, a turns right turns angle. Another right angle it's and like stabs one in the air. It's like one to be shooting bullets around yeah. corners and shit. It's the same thing. But that isn't even his power. That's just the skill he learned. Do you know you know this because you read the graphic novel? Yeah, yeah. yeah but he does yeah. also. There is also a brief mention in the Netflix series about the breathing. Which bit was that? I don't remember. It's this when at they're all. in the house. I think he's like on a couch or something, and he's talking to another brother, and it's it's like a throwaway line, and that's it. I can hold my breath. I'm really good at breathing. Remember how Johnny's really good at breathing under <laughs> water? <Yeah. laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll never talk of this yeah. again. But I think it was important for his character that even though he was given, you know, like a, a shit hand in life, he was a superpower and it was a shit one, he still became a hero. And that's important to him because that completely and totally defines his character. He wants to be that badass hero. Mm. I think maybe we should go through each of them. And I feel like how they completely misused (laughs) any of these powers. I think that's great. It makes it realistic, though. But, so, uh, Space space Boy. Number one, Luther. Luther? Number one, Luther. Yeah. Bam. He's basically super strong, super tough. But so there's a part where Diego and um, Space Space Boy, yeah, they fight in the very first episode because yeah. they've not seen each other and they always bicker. Mm. And Diego draws a knife and everyone's like, "Oh no, he's taking it too far!" And he throws it and like slices the guy's arm. And you're like, yeah. "Okay, that's a regular knife. Mm-hmm. Super strong, super tough guy. He still bleeds. If he had thrown that into." Somewhere more vital, you know, like the neck region. Mm. I don't think he, he was could going... just. But if he wanted to, yeah, he would instantly kill that guy. They're a bit like if he had a gun. Super tough guy. Yeah, could have just been shot. And at any point, where's your superpower? He could have killed me. So who's number three? Rumor. Uh, yeah, Alison, the uh, woman who can tell people. I heard a rumor. And then say whatever she wants, and they'll do that thing. I heard a rumor. We've all got really big dicks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, the power that a, a lot like the preacher had in yeah. sort of like the word of God. Right. You can tell someone something, and they'll do it or believe it. And I liked what they did with it. Like what I liked about this was that they. It was almost like the way that child stars have all this power when they're young and then they grow up and that they abuse that power and it fucks them up and now they're just fucked up adults uh, who yeah. aren't really relevant anymore. And, but what I liked about the way they did it with Alison was that she could get whatever she wants so she became the most famous person in the world <laughs> but used it against her daughter so yeah. they took her daughter away from her. Yeah. Like, yeah. I thought that was quite a cool, interesting yeah, idea. Yeah, and then she decided like she's got to get her daughter back, she's not using her power anymore yeah. to prove that she's an, an adjusted human being that mm-hmm. can actually live with people. Yeah. And so she doesn't really touch on her power mm-hmm. um, or doesn't really use it. Yeah, that was cool. That was fun. Zero problems with it. Really yeah. liked it. Um, yeah. That was a fun way not to use it because, in turn, that's a power that would have solved yeah. <laughs> basically everything in this. Yeah. Because if... You know, the first episode when everyone's arguing, she's like, I heard a rumour we're all actually going to get along. <laughs> yeah. Done. Pow. Okay, right. Um, so that removes eight episodes of this TV <laughs> show now. Oh. So, number four. So Klaus is seance because he can speak to the dead and they speak back, more yeah. importantly. Mm-hmm. Because uh, anyone can speak to the dead. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess. So, and he's the drug addict because it's the only way that he can deal with the fact that there are dead people around him all the time that are trying Talking to talk to him. To him. Well, he and takes like the that. drugs because it sort of suppresses his power. Like, he can't him. really yeah, use yeah, it. Yeah. And I really thought that was cool, cool as well. Yeah. Um, fuck me. He absolutely stole the show for me. Mm. I thought, I just want to watch yeah, the entire. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he was so good. 
I think I know the bit that um, won you over. Was it when he was being choked and he said he was going to come? <laughs> was 100% the moment where they're choking him and then they look down and he's got an erection. Yeah. Is that a... Yep. <laughs> but yeah, oh. yeah, the, uh, the <laughs> strangulation. Oh, it's about to come! <laughs> was a... Oh my god! A beautiful, beautiful yeah, so moment. good, yeah, so fucking good. Uh, so then, number five, five, the boy, the boy, boy wonder. Yeah, he has teleportation yeah, powers. Yeah, he can blink around. Yeah, so he's like Tracer from Overwatch, yeah. <laughs> or okay. like Nightcrawler. Yeah, uh-huh. the X Men's. Um, but he realised that he could also travel through time, and he can only travel a little bit, but he thinks, I'm going to just go hog wild. And there's a, an argument during, was it breakfast? Yeah. And he just leaves and he transports himself like 30 years in the future or something mm-hmm. like that. But he's yeah. missing at the start of this. And then they all gather for his funeral, dad, the dad's funeral, and a big blue thing happens and out he comes. Also, An old man a, face appears. A thing yeah. happens, and it's like, I don't know, Space Boy is like, stay back, everyone, this looks like a temporal vortex. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Who, how the fuck do you know that? How do you know what the fuck a temporal vortex yeah. is? And he's like, uh, everyone, I'm really familiar with these. Like, are you? Is this in the canon that you guys deal with this yeah. a lot? Maybe. Maybe. But sorry. So yeah. So yeah, an old man face appears. And he sort of screams and morphs into the young boy that we saw at the beginning, five at the beginning, and out pops a 13-year-old five, the boy yeah. number five. And I can't remember what he says. Does he, does he talk about the future? Is he just like blasé about it? He, he doesn't tell anyone about the future. He's just like, I'm an old man. Give me a cup of coffee. Where can I get a <laughs> yeah. good cup of coffee? <laughs> Um, oh my god. Because he's a 58 year old man but, in a boy's body. Yeah, like. He oh, makes himself a sandwich. That's important. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not important. <laughs> um, then, number six. Six is ben, ben. The horror. Ben who died. Um, Rip in peace, Ben. F in the yeah. chat. Yeah. Champion uh, of the people. So you, you only really get like a hint at Ben's power at the beginning when they're doing the. The bank, bank, the bank heist. And one of the, the other kids is like, oh, Ben, there's like four or five people in the vault. You've got to go in and deal with them. And he's like, oh, do I have to? Yeah. And he goes in and then it's... against like the sort of misted glass, you see like <laughs> tentacles and blood splatting against it. And he comes yeah. out covered in blood. He's like, I did it again or something like I that. I did a bad mm. murder. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, that's a cool power. Yeah. That's a real power right there. Mm. You so... Know. He, like, in his his skin opens up and a dimensional portal appears. I love it. And extra dimensional beings come forth and kill anything that's there. But somehow uh, it knows that it's bad guys that they, they kill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's not explained either, is it? I don't remember that ever being... No. Because the only time you see the power is he disappears into a also, room. Also, he can breathe underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's yeah. A, that's not even his power. He learned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's dead, but he is. We don't awesome. know how he died. He died young, not quite a child. I think he, you know, yeah, eighteen, nineteen, like early twenties, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. about 20. something like that. But then he hangs out, and it was horrible. It was a horrible death, and that's all we know. Oh yeah, because <laughs> they don't they don't talk about it. Like, oh, his death was so we bad. We don't fucking talk mm-hmm. about it, and we've got a statue for him. Yeah. But he's in the series through Klaus because he's usually just hanging out with with Klaus. I see dead people. Because I guess they have a a stronger link. Because even though Klaus is drugged up and he can't see any other undead, he can still always see Ben. Mm. I think Ben is looking after his brother. Yeah. Um, because Klaus is fucked up and he's trying to help. But he's dead. Uh, so he can't help that much. Because he's like, no, don't take the drugs. Drugs are bad. And that doesn't stop Klaus. He takes the drugs. Yeah. Um, 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 um. yeah. It's like he's pouring cereal into a bowl, but it's all different kinds of drugs and mm. pills. And um, just, um, just goes for it. Very uh, Moorish. See, so then finally we get on to number seven. Vanya. Vanya. Mysteriously has no powers. 
The normal one. Yeah. The normal one. Plays the violin. Mm-hmm. Likes the music. Yeah. And wrote a book. She wrote a book. A reveal all memoir of and, the Umbrella Academy. And so the family all hates her. She kind of doesn't like the family. She got left out of everything. Yeah. The portraits they painted, she's in none of them. The family yeah. photos, she's not in them. She could never go on any uh, crime-stopping adventures. No. She always had to hang out in the background. Yeah, with some binoculars with her yeah. dad. Yeah. Uh, with bad Professor X. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's all we know at this setup point, right? We can't uh, reveal too much more. Uh, but overall, I've got to say, there's a. I, although I'm going to complain in the more spoilery part of this, mm -hmm. um, that there's a lot of plot inconsistencies. Tonally, I felt like the show really fucking bounces yeah. around a lot, and they didn't know what they. The dance overall vibe. Sequences. Oh my gosh. So the random dance sequences. <laughs> Oh, uh, they were fun. <laughs> but then in turn, like, some of them, I loved, generally, any of the scenes that they really obviously put music on. Mm. It kind of, like, will just come out of nowhere, and these are real kind of, like, big, kind of catchy, sort of, like, 80s, yeah. 90s songs. I thought those, generally, I fucking loved. I, th uh, I, kind of, I kind of did, like, after a while, though, I was like, oh, you, like, you, th you think you're so cool. Like, this, it's almost like trying a bit too hard to be... Hip and cool. Yeah. It's like any excuse we can get to have violence with a uh, pop song. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. and get that like sort of like juxtaposition yeah. going on. Um, you know what? It did it for me. Like when the we haven't even mentioned that it was written by a musician. Yeah, right. Oh. The graphic novel. Gerald Way from My Chemical Romance. I didn't, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Was it written by a musician? Yes. Gerald Way Gerard from Way. My Chemical Romance. Are they big? Oh, they're the emo well, band, aren't he's they? He's put on a bit of weight since the band stopped. <laughs> oh but let's not talk about that. That's wow. quite offensive. Yeah. So, well, maybe that makes a bit more sense. Um, but yeah, like, honestly, okay. the series was fun. It was real popcorn garbage. Like... Uh, but the kind of thing that like look just get to the point how many stars do you give <laughs> honestly like, is it stars or is it like I don't know like we can have our own uh, thing hang handcuffs um, I was kind manacles. of thinking like keys that you lock uh, yeah. like how many keys would go on the um, key what, ring oh, right, yeah. The, the... yeah does that make sense yeah, yeah. out of how, how many keys out of five keys five I mean we could make it six Sure. No, let's... We, we, <laughs> 20. <laughs> I'm going to give it three. Three keys out of five. Out of five. Okay. It's and then at the bottom of the screen, there's three keys. Don't, don't give me more work to do. Like, bing, bing, <laughs> bing. And each key is rotating. Okay. And they're different styles and designs yeah. of keys. And as oh. you say, your result, the keys go into locks. And go unlock. into locks. Yeah. Shonk. Uh, perfect. Right. Okay. Fine. I'll do. I'll do. I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> I so like, what? I like that you do the key unlocking a door, and there's like a smiley face, and then there's like the two keys that right. aren't used. Yeah. And it's like there's a sad person looking out between like the bars because they're not let out because they didn't get they... all the keys. Oh, oh, so if he gets five keys, then and they're the all unlocked. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Free it from the dungeon. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> So if Perfect. you can do that, yeah, sure, sure. sure. Um, okay, so how many stars would you? Well, how many stars. Keys? <laughs> <laughs> for, well, for... it needs twenty-seven stars to make a key. Oh, the stars are going to <laughs> oh circle the god. screen and turn into a key. Oh my god! What I lo okay, so for me, the first half, I was I was into it. The first like five episodes, I was like, oh, what, what? I'm interested to see how it unravels. There's a few mysteries going on. As the mystery started to unravel, I got more and more bored to the point where I was just, not bored, just frustrated. And like you said, with the plot things, just very convenient plot things kept happening that needed to happen. And by the by the last episode, I was just, I didn't know what was going, I was like, what is going on? This is, I, I was just, it was frustrating. Yeah, yeah. So I would give it three Jailer's Keys out of five as well. Ooh, um, I like that they're specifically Jailer's Keys, not just any keys for you. Yeah, the so big heavy so weighty keys. So you do need to use different key assets now. Are you just house keys on yours? Just Very um, different. Right, okay, yeah. Uh, so, how many Jailer's Keys out of uh, five? I really, really enjoyed it. I'd give it a solid four. Four Jailer's Keys. I thought it was a... Uh, a roller coaster, Simon Lane. <laughs> That's what okay, they're doing. Wow. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I like the comics, and I think going into it with that, I wasn't disappointed by anything. Like it, it met my expectations, and in some places, it exceeded them. Wow. Um, Would you describe it as better than the comics or worse than the comics? I mean, it's a different beast. You have to choose one of them <laughs> expunged from history, the other one immortalised as the greatest bit of media ever produced. Choose now. Oh, no. Choose now. <laughs> That's horrible. I mean, if the Netflix series didn't happen, maybe there would be an, like a series of movies, an extended mm. cinematic universe. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. 20 hours. There might be a second series even. Well, I'm sure we'll so, go on to that, but yeah. they really fucking want a second series. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you're giving it you're giving it four. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really agree with what you guys are saying. I think it would get a higher rating from me. I think this could have been a really tight, like, six episode series. Ten was too long. So I think it was six comics. So maybe they should have just stuck to six. Oh, it's the magic right. number. Oh, yeah, that could work. Um, now we're going to move into more spoiler territory. Spoiler. <gasps> Turns out everyone can breathe underwater. Everyone. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Come on. Come on. What do you think of Ellen Page in it? Pretty good. Yeah, I pretty didn't have good. A I have to. I feel like when she came on screen, it was almost like there was this. Grey, emotionless void <laughs> is like moving around with this like blur of. She just had this one She's facial been expression the like entire time. She's horribly oppressed her entire life. She's she's got like a. It's like there's a little grey cloud following her everywhere mm. she goes, and her only joy in life is playing the violin. So and can, she doesn't even like that much. <laughs> she's not that good. Yeah. At it. She doesn't even like that. I felt like she was like this plank of wood. That they just kind of like wheeled around the set at stages. Where everyone else in that show is like boombastic. Like they're all quite over the top. Yeah, but that like, reflects, you but, know, them all being heroes. And but I just... feel like she was playing, you know, a sad person that would be in a movie, a far more serious setting. Yeah. Compared to this, where it was so downplayed, so muted, so... Mm. It felt just the wrong thing. Like, like she's in black and white and everything else is in colour um, and not in a artistic way. It just felt like tonally she was really out of place. I, di- I didn't get that. I didn't know. I wasn't distracted by it. I just thought, oh, yeah, she's the one who's been left out. So she's going to be moping around and not really want to be there. And she's only there because her dad died. So she's come back yeah, to the funeral yeah. and she's just putting up with it until she can get away again. It works for her story arc as yeah. well. Yeah, I think, you know, I can see, like, the sort of logic. I just really feel like she... Ooh. She was a Debbie Downer. She was a real <laughs> Debbie Downer. Did you... What did you think? Knowing nothing about it, did you think there was going to be some reveal about Vanya? Instantly. Yep. This was... So, um, <laughs> Tom had told me um, that you were interested in, like, looking at this show. Mm. And I was like, I've never heard of it. Okay, I'll watch it. I watched an episode... And then was mentioned like, oh, I started watching it. Yeah, kind of, kind of. The first episode really got me hooked. Mm-hmm. But I was like, one hundred percent, Vanya is going to have superpowers, <laughs> like the best superpowers ever. And they've made her suppress them and they've hidden them because within this setup of, the, I guess we didn't really touch upon, at the same point in like nineteen eighty nine or eighty seven or whatever. Is it 49 women around the world give 43. birth? 43. 43 women around the world give birth. Simultaneously. They weren't pregnant before. Suddenly they're pregnant and they're giving birth immediately. In a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Vanya was one of these kids. And I just feel like I've seen this trope of this one isn't special. We completely ignore them. Yeah. Like, I feel like that was so played out. Yeah. And when... Suddenly, she starts kind of suspecting she might have powers. Oh, Um, my God. I was just like... I knew this five episodes Like, (laughs) from the very beginning, I feel like this has been so obvious. But maybe they were hinting heavily at that, but in turn, they still make it a big reveal. So, spoiler, she can breathe underwater. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. This whole time... 
because we have the big Aquaman oh. scene. <laughs> so Vanya, she's she's lonely. She's very sad. She meets a lovely young man. He 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 whittles things mm-hmm. and makes little wooden boys <laughs> <laughs> or ducks. So basically, she falls in love with Syndrome from The Incredibles. Yes. Yep. I'm your number one fan! And he wanted to be an Incredible, and he went along and met The Incredibles, and the dad was a fucking asshole. Get off my property. <laughs> And, all, and the entire crowd. <laughs> You're a shit, a little shit. And it's insane. The entire crowd is pointing and laughing at the child. Like, you have no power. You never will have power. Now, go home. She, Mary, is falling in love with Syndrome. Okay, Leonard. Because um, he's the only, only person who's ever shown her any affection or made her feel special in her entire life. Yes. Yeah. She's pretty sad. Yeah. That's why she's so sad. Can't you understand why she's so sad? (laughs) (laughs) So uh, she falls in love with him and they then have the weirdest relationship ever. Mm -hmm. Because you start feeling like this guy's a bit fucking weird. The family is like suspecting the guy's a bit weird. And when, when they go on that sort of retreat to the cabin, there is the most uncomfortable scene when... He's trying to force her powers. You know what I really need to do is practice. And he's like, oh yes, practice, practice is good. And she's like, no, the, the violin, the concert's tomorrow. And he's like, uh, <laughs> you're not <laughs> taking this seriously. <laughs> and then she just gets up and kisses him on the head. Yeah. Because she is oblivious because she has no emotions. So Rumor is the first one to get to the cabin and find Vanya. And Vanya's displaying her powers and... Rumor's a little bit worried, but she cares for her sister. She's trying to reason with her. They have an argument. She's like, I'm so sorry, but she's like going to bust out using her word of God on her. I heard, I heard. And that's as far as she gets, because yeah. her throat is slit by the bow. The bow of a violin, the sharpest well, thing known to man. Well, I wasn't sure if it was the bow or if it was like a shockwave. Like um, it, the bow's covered in blood as well. Yeah, she what? gets it out of the box later, and it's got blood stains all over the. But like her if hair. She, but if she sent like sort of like, because later on she's sending like force waves that are destroying things. Mm. But at that time, what I saw was it like slice and blood sprays out. Maybe because, but the same way, like you know, that's we need Dexter to yeah <laughs> come in there and blood, blood spray. Yeah. Like. We we're, we're sort of making an excuse for the show. We like we have to fill in the gaps because at that point we don't know she can do shock waves from her violin. Bow. Yeah, she swashes swishes her a, a bow, slices her in so the neck, we're and not, she bleeds to we're death. We're not told. Well, no, she doesn't bleed to death. She lives. She survives. Because <laughs> I, I was like, holy fuck, they just fucking killed yeah, one yeah, of them. Yeah. Wow, I did not expect the mm. show would do that. And then start of the next episode, they're like. I don't think she's going to be able to talk again for a while, but she's going to be okay. And I was like... So she was slashed in the neck. She lay on the floor for God knows how long bleeding out. The family arrived. They drove her back from the countryside to the middle of the city and performed surgery on her throat uh, and got blood (laughs) back into her somehow. And she's okay. I was like, oh, that's fucking lame. Should we continue talking about this? Or shall we talk about Pogo, who we haven't mentioned yet? <laughs> yeah. Because I fucking love Pogo. I liked Pogo. I love him from the <laughs> comics. I, I adore him. So I feel like Pogo, um, there was a lot of things that in this show, bear in mind I've not read the comics, that really, if like you had never told me this was based on a comic, I would say this is based on a comic for these like visual yeah, cues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the monkey butler for this sort of Victorian aristocrat explorer guy. Yeah. That, I feel like that's something I would see in a comic. Yeah. Um, Cha-Cha and Hazel wearing the cartoon character. Yeah. yeah. Mas- I mean, like, that is feel like people in suits with, like, machine guns wearing cartoon character heads. It's so cool! That's something that works <laughs> uh, better in a comic book. Yeah. But in... Real life, because also the, do those do those things do they inflate? They inflate or, like hard. Then they're they? they yeah. like helmets. They yeah. felt so all over the, them. all over the place. It was those kind of things where I was like, "Bam! This is definitely based on the comic." These the visual cues that make so much sense in comics that 
Ooh, a little bit iffier. Um, Pogo looked great, though, didn't he? Didn't he look great? It was for how little it's used or how little it has to actually do with the story. They'd spent a lot of money on Pogo. Yeah. <laughs> the monkey butler. I mean, he does only, like, very slowly, like, walk around. Did you oh, like his little glasses? Gets, or he gets fucking on. Mm-hmm. impaled on some antlers. <laughs> yeah, that, the, oh, the worst the death. Chat. Like, I was just like, I wasn't oh, even Pogo. sad. I was just like, that's a waste. It just happens. He's just like, boom, impaled on some antlers. Well, also, that kind of cements, like, do they have to reassure people that, oh, Vanya is actually bad? Because her reaction to, like, not letting her sister um, use powers on her and slashing her throat mm. was, like, a real heat of the moment. They're arguing. Yeah. Her sister's about to she... fucking magic her and just, like, fuck. Oh, shit, I accidentally killed yeah. you. And she's yeah. distraught. But then after that, she's like, oh, Pogo, by the way, BAM! You're fucking dead! Yeah. Fuck you, monkey! Exactly. And you're like, why did she kill him? Like, what's he ever this done? This is a huge problem I've got, which is that Vanya, up until five seconds before she turns evil, <clears throat> loves her family. Yeah, she she's really like, wants to make things work. So for the whole, for nine episodes, she's she's sad, like, she's got tension with her family, but she, she loves it. They're her family. Like, she feels remorse for killing Alison. And- I didn't mean to kill Alison. And I love her. For me, it was just, I felt like that was so sudden, and I was just like, whoa, okay, so now she's but just she's a different character evil. at that point. She's a completely right. different character. She's a white violin. Right, okay. She's no longer from that point, You see, that wasn't in the TV show. Well, no. No. Because my... How long do you want the fucking <laughs> show to be? <laughs> Oh, it was 10 hours. I feel... Do you want it to be 16 but hours? It, but it's almost like the focus should have been in a different place, like more of a build towards her becoming evil because it wasn't like she was succumbing to being evil throughout or there weren't any hints I mean, that she was evil. It was just she yeah. has a power and the guy is evil trying to bring it out of her, but she always loves her family. And it's a, a conversation in the mirror with her childhood self for about 10 seconds. Suddenly she's like evil. Super and evil. now it's flat out. Just but everything's good. That, in the Netflix series was a lot more motivation than there was in the comics. Oh, really? Because in the comics, if I remember this right, she's phoned up by a mystery person. A mystery person says, your dad's dead. Do you want to join my orchestra? And so she goes to the funeral, and then she goes and joins this orchestra. And she does quite well in the orchestra, and it turns out the, the entire point of the orchestra is to play the Apocalypse Suite, which is a song that will bring about the end of the world somehow. And she is a key part of it. And none of that really makes sense. Mm. And how she actually turns, it doesn't quite work. Right. And I thought in the TV series, she had so much more motivation and went through a lot more. Mm. And so when I was watching it, I was I like, I accept this. Yeah. This makes sense to me. It makes a lot more fucking sense than it did when I was reading the thing. Yeah. So, but it's almost like I guess in an ideal world, the way that I would sort of have liked to have seen it was in the way that in Lord of the Rings, Frodo is like over the course of three movies slowly twisted and turned towards the ring. Yeah. So because it wasn't any surprise that she was gonna be evil, I feel like you could have had that where she's flirting with this idea of of using a power or being evil, or somehow she's been tainted by it. Because to me, it was just that such a dramatic black and white. One second yeah, she's good, super. the next second she's bad. Where I was, she, lash, just threw me. she because... lashes out in rage. But you know, it's not just all this suppressed emotion. It's also the fact that she finds out that everyone has also been lying to her, right. and she finds out that you know the reason she, she killed Pogo was that he was complicit in like, I mean, rumor had to. She did. I heard a rumor you were not you, you special in any way. Have any powers? Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, Pogo was there next to Rumor when all this was happening. Yeah. And he could have told her at some point, mm. and he didn't. Well, he was obeying the rules of the TV show, where yeah. you've got to hold out on information. <laughs> Until the very end, Just the last yeah. possible moment. Wait, is it running a bit slow? Okay, so who's got a story that they can yeah. tell someone else yeah. that will move it forward a little bit? Bam. So I've, I've got a question. It, pro- it might be answered. Because you were saying that Hargreaves, the dad, might be an alien. Or from the far future. Or from the future, or something. Basically, my question was, at one point it's revealed that he killed himself so that he could create a murder mystery 
that would get all the Academy members back together and them solving this murder mystery would make them bond so that they'd be ready for the apocalypse. However, the only way that the Academy members know that the apocalypse is going to happen is that Five magically returns at this exact moment, not because his father died, but just because he happened to arrive at that point. And then he's the only way to reveal that the world is going to end. So how would Hargreaves know that? When does Five return? The evening of the funeral. Yeah. Hargreaves knew that they had to be, the others, the other five, had to be there on that evening so he knew that, at that place so, he so that either... they could meet five yeah and of course we're not told any of this yeah, yeah, yeah i'm just also just to step on this a little bit so this is a guy who in the 19 early 1990s he made a full robot that could look after the Vanya. oh yeah um, he, he made could, a sex droid. <laughs> he could, um, and it also doubled as like a mother figure for yeah. the kids. Uh, he could t- change like a chimpanzee into being having a full clever one. human intelligence yeah. and be his butler. with a nice accent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and he has riches beyond and he's belief. Got the super serum. It can super save serum. people's he's lives. He's got all of this fucking stuff. Yeah. Could he not have faked his death? Maybe he did. Like. Straight away, when they were like, he actually killed himself, I was like, did he need to? Like, you uh, have so many powers and technological wonders. We don't see him die. We see CCTV footage of, of him die. And yeah. So, well, okay. They don't see the body. No, just the ashes. And there's a, like, a, yeah, there's a coroner's oh, report and a maybe, bunch of ashes. Maybe I did get suckered in them because I was just thinking, like, well, he's dead. He should have faked his death because why Why would you kill yourself if you could perfectly fake your own <laughs> death and there, no one would be able to tell any different? So. Time travel. <laughs> time travel. Five goes and becomes... Uh, camp, is it like a, some sort of executive or a person who is in like charge a, of a world event that has to happen and they have to ensure that and nothing gets in the, the way. the event he was, he had to make sure happened, was was it the Hindenburg? The Hindenburg, yeah. yeah. And we saw him, much older, with a gun, shooting the Hindenburg. at the Hindenburg. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you remember that? Oh. In the black Do and white montage where he's I like... I hated that montage yeah, yeah. so much. It's, oh, it's him as an old man in front of a green screen in black and white going like this and various world events Turning in the background. from one way <laughs> to the other oh, and then back again. Going up and down. Uh, but what I was going to say was he was put in charge of world events and he's put in a room with various other people who are also in charge of world events. And they give him weird looks. Yeah. He's there because he wants to find out who is responsible for the apocalypse. The woman in charge of the apocalypse is sat in the desk behind him with the file on her desk yeah. of what the apocalypse is. Convenient. Can't he just read the file and see? That's what he does. He steals it, takes it into the toilet. Doesn't he then s- the lady, the handler, walks in. There's a big piss next to her. <laughs> because she's on a liquid yeah, diet. That is amazing. <laughs> so she knows. Okay. I reckon she's set this up. Yeah. And she's just like dangling bait before him. Mm. And she knows he's taken a file. And that's why she's... Coincidentally, taking a big piss yeah. in their co-ed bathrooms. Yeah, yeah I don't think it's not a coincidence. Because she invites him to dinner or lunch, have lunch with him. Um, gives him sweets and things. And one of the sweets is the Ooh, tracker. What a then, Because she knew he'd take that sweet. <laughs> yeah. From the bowl. She, they all had trackers in, apart from, from the, the one, one that he ate, that he ate <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah. That would have been amazing if he took the track. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's really, disgusting. It's really sharp. <laughs> it tastes like my lips. Yes, we designed it to taste like your lips. But back back to time travel. They they try and have their cake and eat it. They explain so much stuff with time travel, and so many events happen because of time travel. But in turn, even with the laws of time travel they've set up in the show, yeah, they could have solved everything with time travel. But the, the issue is the, the agency's purpose is to fix events that are caused by time travel. And by fixing some of those events, it may cause other problems that they have to then fix. And oh. that's the reason why we see the Hindenburg and also his file is the Hindenburg is because something went wrong because 
they time traveled and they actually fucked it up so they had to then fix it again but right. and it's a never-ending fucking cycle of them fixing their own the mistakes same over, and over and over and over again. again all the people on this floor are case managers each one responsible for one major event at a time the time travelers they uh they can see <clears throat> if the time events are going to go wrong and so they send people to make sure the time events stay on track. But the mm. reason they're going to go wrong in the first place is because of time travel. It's because yeah. they're time traveling. But there, there are so many moments where... I'm going to get, get down to the problem of... They don't explain their time travel very well, but the whole fucking series revolves around mm. time travel. Yeah. And they don't just stick to its Terminator rules. It's, you know, whatever you do is going to cause... The stuff to have happened and it isn't um you know like back to the future rules if you go back in time and change something that will s everything will change in the future like it will cease to be kind of thing but it does happen in the show there's one episode where all of the events are undone which Booyah. is so so they go and they change like, that Fuck, thing i could have saved it <laughs> like, there's no watch in this episode I also like the they a bit like you know the sort of Amish. They were like, for our pure aesthetic, nineteen fifties. That is what we are basing everything on. We can go to any time period, but nineteen fifties. Everyone has to dress like the fifties. Everyone has the typewriter. Yeah. If my theory about them constantly fucking things up and making more mistakes and having to like, fix them, I imagine love if that. they were more efficient and they had algorithms algorithms doing all this shit for them with today's technology mm. the amount of fuck ups would just be exponentially more so maybe it's good that they're actually quite inefficient mm. yeah. but imagine you're being recruited because they they recruit people from different periods of time I assume the culture shock of being in the 50s just if if I was you, to like, go back there... You, like, see a Chevy there, drive by and you're like, oh! Well, no, I'm thinking more... Because you're a caveman. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, if they find... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Zug here really think he's going to make a great agent. So have you ever seen an MP40 before? Tom. Tom 2, Zug. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, so this is a machine gun, Zug. Uh, you're used to, like, a rock, but we're actually going to send you uh, to 19... Uh, we, we need to make sure John Lennon dies on this day. <laughs> Someone's going to stop it. Right, just go for it. Oh, take this briefcase. John Lennon like, has been mm. beaten to death with the butt of an M16 <laughs> I love it. today. Yeah, that's exactly it. He, doesn't, he just thinks it's a shinier rock or something. I was thinking more the reverse of like, you're a modern day person and you're just told like, yeah, so you've got to, you can only use typewriters now. Yeah, but this in this world... There are no computers in the modern day. Ellen Page writes on a typewriter in the modern day. There's no mobile phones. They can't just phone anyone. Do we not see any mobile phones? I'm pretty sure we don't. I... Any computers? Do you know what? I fucking appreciate it for them just thinking, we're not going to have mobile phones in this. Yeah. Because mobile phones are bullshit and it just ruins any sort of like, yeah. narrative like this. Exactly. <laughs> Because otherwise, what it's like, you know, the horror movie thing where, oh, we have to put them in an isolated place where there's no phone signal. Otherwise yeah, the yeah, we need, to, we need to, like, shut yeah. that down. Yeah. Fuck, I um, didn't even notice. What about the, the big lab that makes glass eyes? Surely that had fucking computers in. Everything was on files. They all had fucking yeah, files. Yeah, it was files. 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 Well, maybe there was just no I'm fucking computers. I'm pretty sure computers. there's no computers. What about the fucking mum? You open the arm up, and that is all robotics and flashing lights and stuff. Well, we have... saw wires and flashing lights. We didn't, you know, it could be like the Fallout universe. Maybe the microprocessor yeah. hadn't been invented. It'd have to be something like so that. What she... Also, how did Space Boy get to the moon and back? Because he got, he found out his dad died, and he managed to get from the moon to New York in the same amount of time that it took, like, Allison to fly from LA to New York. He just jumped yeah. off. Or maybe he did. He's super strong, so he can withstand the re-entry. And he Fuck. can um, hold his breath going through space. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Luther, he's a bit inconsistent. Like, the actual size of him changes a little bit. There's some moments where he just looks like a hench guy, and some moments where he literally looks like a gorilla. A gorilla yeah. with his, like, little little fucking stick oh. neck coming out and like the little head. There was never a point where I was like, I buy that he's got a gorilla body or a chip yeah. body. It always they looked like he was just wearing a suit. Big yeah. fucking neck muscles yeah. and that would have done it for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, have exactly. been absolutely fine but... So in the comic, the this is going to make you angry, in the comic, 
there was a terrible accident with Luther. Is, they cut he his head off and put it on the gorilla's body. <laughs> yeah. A Martian gorilla's body. Okay. Not just a gorilla, a Martian gorilla's body. If they made it look good. <laughs> to be honest, it, it, that isn't the weirdest thing that would have happened in this show. No. I'd rather Martian gorilla body. I mean, just the clubbing scene with him with that body going crazy and the girl that's really into furries. <laughs> yeah. Just it's being like, so oh. weird. Huge fan of the furries. Klaus has now been off drugs long enough that he can... See dead people all the time. See dead people all the time. And also, apparently, bring dead people that they can interact with the real world. Somehow. Also, he spoke to his dad in heaven. His dad gave him a shave and said, you've got extra powers. That was that another scene that super felt like a comic <laughs> book to me. Um, I really liked up... it, because he was so pumped to see his boyfriend, David, <laughs> from Vietnam, that we haven't yeah. even talked about. No. And he's, like, jogging around, and, and it's his fucking dad. I expected my son, who can conjure the dead, to have brought me forth days ago. And the, the conversation ends just as he's about to say the most oh, important oh, thing. Oh, the big secret, son! Now listen to me, number four. What I'm about to say is of great import. That happens so often. And then there's Alison is in the hospital at a certain point, and the guy's lying in bed, and she needs to know if... He recognises his sister. Do you oh, recognise this girl? Annoying. And she's about to show him. And the nurse Dr. Serres, he was doing more tests. He's yeah. got a rest. <laughs> I can't speak like, to him. Answer the lady's question. Is this the girlfriend? Sorry, but the doctor's ordered more tests. You're going to have to ask him questions later. We can't give you literally five seconds more time. Alison won't even just like ram it in his face. She's literally oh. she's just like, all right, I'll get out. Which gives Leonard the chance to go in and steal the body and kill the guy. And Yeah. It's just everything is so like... Everything, uh, certain plot points have to happen, so we need to make sure. Yeah, that, yeah. Because the one that really stood out to me, and when I noticed it, I, it Alison, uh, Diego, and Five are all, they discover that Leonard, is it, is it, it is Leonard, right? Leonard, yeah. yeah. That he's a bad guy. They've Simple. gone to his attic. And it's not like, even oh. his real name, but he, we were calling him Leonard. Yeah, right, yeah. And the, the, the thing that needed to happen for the plot is Alison needed to go alone to the cabin, right? For the plot to happen so that Alison could have a net cut, she needs to go alone. So, they need to get Diego and Five out of the equation. So after they've found out, okay, we need to find Leonard. Five grabs his chest. Oh God, falls over to the floor and he's got a piece of shrapnel in him, which we never heard about before, I don't think. Well, there, there, was, there were little there was, hints of it. Oh, but he, uh, he goes down and then he gets scene two for a scene. And after that, he's fine. Yeah, uh, he recovered never again. really quickly. Yeah, and Diego as well, just as they're about to head off, goes outside and the police suddenly show up to arrest him. And he goes to jail, and a scene later is given the key and let out, and never goes like the police. Are yeah, him. they just had to get him out it's of the way. It's just those two people had to be out of the way so she could leave, and that happens so much, which is like right, this thing needs to happen, so we need to move these characters Ooh. here and here, and then bring them back with no consequences. So yeah. that's that's how any of this works. I though. just feel like it, all movies, TV, like any no, narrative works. But like it would this. be there would be consequences to it. It's the fact that this is forgotten. a lot more ham-fisted. I mean, it's not subtle, certainly. Yeah. Like, but it's that it's that. But there's a lot of times where the characters are split up, brought back together, split up, brought back together, and they don't have mobile phones. So That's how true. Do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's if they split up and something happens, it's that that then informs later story. It's like, oh, I've I've, I've hurt my legs, so I can't go. Oh, my legs fine. Don't worry about it. A scene later, once the thing has happened that you yeah. need to happen. I think it was it was good enough, especially considering there's so many characters That's going true. so many different places yeah. and. A lot of shit happening. Mm. So the whole show ends where they're like, Vanya fucking shoots the moon with a, a laser from her chest, mm -hmm. and like a big old piece of that moon is coming to Earth mm -hmm. and is gonna blow it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're like, okay, time travel kids, can we get out of here? And he's like, I never, you done, betcha. It. I never <laughs> done it before, but. Let's all hold hands. But probably hold hands, and they're like, okay, well, let's just. Time travel out of here! And it then shows them all as kids, which I'm really worried that the next show is gonna have them all as kids, or at least this is definitely fixed Alison's throat mm. when they said she can't talk again. Right. Pretty sure that time travel trick you've done there, she's gonna get young, then old again, and like, oh, it's all Magic. fine. But Vanya, she, maybe she'll be deaf because she was like, you know, the bullet was fired right from a gun right head. next to her ear. That broke her concentration and mm. I, th I thought, that, yeah, I thought that was the sound of the gun was the sound that she harnessed to explode the moon. Maybe the yeah. like, super laser. Oh, that's what it's like a bullet. Yeah, but yeah, she. Um, I mean, Vanya gets uh, 
shot and paralysed in the comic. Does she shoot the moon? No. Oh. Um, the world saved? Question mark. I think. Oh. oh. There's no moon thing. Because this right. um, ends with a real just cliffhanger, like. Oh. Ooh. They they just teleport out of here. Yeah. Is it okay? And, and then the credits I, roll, and then it says James Bond will return in Octopus, <laughs> which is strange. Uh, I just felt it left like a weird, sour taste in my mouth. And it had ruined all the stuff I'd enjoyed when I was just like, fuck you that for sour just taste, wanting... It was that sweet I gave you. Oh, the crunchy... <laughs> <to track. laughs> Why is it beeping? <laughs> but yeah, like any show now that ends... Like, I appreciate there's like money to be made and it's a business but when you know we're just doing this to get another season mm. we just want more money how else would you prefer it to end they were like we did it guys yeah and they were high five at Fine. the end I don't know have something like that happen and then it, it freezes on them high fiving mm. and the credits come up over them have a resolution to you know most of the plot threads you can leave a few open and then you can short tease at something that can go further whereas okay this ending was this felt like it should have been the ending of like episode 9 and then episode 10 happens i mean and them actually finishing it yeah maybe it would have been good you know they they save the day they're like they're eating i don't know like like the avenger they're eating shawarma in a in a restaurant, which is what they call it in America, we just call it kebab meat. Okay. Uh, they're eating kebab meat in a restaurant. They're all really tired, and then we see you know someone do a superpower outside the window because they're one of the other forty three kids. Mm. Well, yeah, because mm. right. I was Growing waiting up. for that to happen. Because like at first I was thinking when um, Syndrome was there, mm. like is he one of the the other kids? Like, when I was just waiting for one of the other kids to turn up. Right, yeah, yeah. And have, you know, fucking laser eyes guy just, like, bust in. Or, like, a laser girl eyes. like the scorpion. And just someone with these other powers. <laughs> it's snippy. Scorpion. Yeah, yeah. Just snippy in here, isn't it? <laughs> someone. Oh, nice. But, yeah, they have one of these other people. Because I assume Looks like everyone this else. has a sting in its tail. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, apparently all of these kids have these powers. Yeah, but from from what I'm aware of, Reginald Hargreaves picked the top seven. Somehow he knew oh, the so seven most powerful. A little, a little like theory. And one of them is breathing underwater. So how <laughs> shit are all the others? Yeah. One of them is quite strong. Not not really strong, well, just, strong, just quite strong. Oh, and one of them is the Apocalypse Kid. I can yeah. make a single yeah. olive appear, but only once every hour. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been my superpower. Yeah. That was a, an off-camera um, conversation. I <laughs> but so, um, all of these women, at the same time, all got pregnant. There's time travel. This guy can make super things. Did he time travel, impregnate all of these women with super babies to be born at this stage? And he wow. had planned the whole thing. In the comics, it's explained... Two cosmic beings are having a wrestling match, and s somehow during it, sparks fly out and go into women, and then they have the babies. And then they, the kids have, instead of the bank heist as well, right at the start, instead of the bank heist, they're, uh, they're fighting at the, in Paris at the Eiffel Tower, and then he, it turns out the Eiffel Tower is a rocket, and it goes off into space. Does that explain everything for you? Have I Actually, <laughs> that has filled in every gap in this show uh, so far. Does it explain... Because there's the start of one of the episodes where Hargreaves is in the future with rockets taking yeah, off. Yeah, there's fucking a hundred rockets taking off. Or is he on an alien planet? But then he appears like in Krypton? Victorian, wherever, New York. Is that explained in the comics? Yeah, because he turns up Not and he the buys first... the Umbrella Academy when it's like a... An Umbrella shop. An umbrella shop. He's like, oh yeah, so I'll call it this. It's good job it was the eight. French letters shop. Yeah, yeah, fuck. It's the condom academy. <laughs> but yeah, so he's clearly got something going on. I don't know. But it just seemed like a weird thing to set up and make no reference to ever again. Also, he opened the jar and the, the golden things come yeah. out. Are there, is that related to the 43 children? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, because he there's that scene where he's talking to his wife who's dying. Yeah. And she makes a reference to, like, 
there's some nod towards like children or something like that and like don't worry they all love me and yeah that's why I felt like he was the one that had made the kids and his wife had been helping him because she had some kind of magic fucking I, th- I think powers cause... yeah well I guess we'll see so uh, just to like wrap up there were, there were definitely tons of stuff in this show that I loved. I mm. feel like I've been very negative. Mm. What's the thing you love most? Um, was honestly, it, and why was it Pogo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Klaus, 100%, was the best. Mm. Um, and uh, because I expected it just to be like, oh, uh, it's just sort of like sketchy drug addict brother. And it's funny because he's like, he's really sketchy. Yeah. But no, he was fucking amazing and mm. funny and felt like the only character that actually had a, a character arc. And he was in Numb. And he went back to time really travel like to that Vietnam. Bit. Yeah, yeah, where he came back suddenly and he'd spent a year at war. Like, that's a cool oh, idea. And I love the scene where he's being tied up by Diego and he, he comes out to his brother. Like, his brother was like, oh, you know... Tell me about the girl. Yeah. He's like, oh, was, it was... It what was, was a, her name? Yeah, like... And he says, his name was Dave. And you know what? Diego, very woke, he was like, hmm. And just keeps tying yeah. up. And, yeah. Like, just but, no reaction. But that was all re- erased. Because they just went back. Oh, yeah, because the <laughs> Oh, no, that happened. Oh, fuck. Uh, but yeah, he was fantastic. Um, Hazel and Cha Cha, I, I did enjoy. Yeah. I thought they were. The donut shop. The donut yeah. shop. Um, like, I don't want to. Oh, my God. Like, the woman felt quite old. Yeah. It was, it was a bit odd. Uh, that she... It was a, a May and December relationship. Yeah. Um, and, like, honestly, like, the shots where it's, like, playing goofy music, they've got their stupid animal heads. Just they've like... eaten chocolate with cannabidol uh, in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a dumb one. But them walking along just, like, firing machine guns and, like, tearing up a department store is... Yeah, that was pretty cool. It was, like, some cool visuals. And their interactions were really good fun. And Cha-Cha's idea to... Um... Threatened Hazel's lover by uh, dangling her in a chair over a hot tub oh was uh, the most <laughs> elaborate. That was so dumb with like a rope. It didn't seem slowly... threatening. No, at all. it was like she'd fall into it and it, like the water would go up yeah, to here. Yeah, how deep and... would it really be in there? I was like, is it so hot that she's going to burn with to acid death? Acid or, or something? But it didn't look like it. It was just well, a bubbling jacuzzi. I was more worried that like you'd fall in that, kind of like knock your head on the side of the bathtub, which was clearly. Not the intention of the trap, but like, <laughs> yeah. ooh, that would really fucking hurt. Yeah. It would have been amazing if she fell in. It was like, ah! Like, oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, she nice. fell back in and uh, woke up and it was all a dream like Inception where he oh, topples into the mask. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. It's a dream. Yes. dream. <gasps> but yeah, those parts were really good. Like, I, yeah, as you say, like, the, all the broken different superheroes, I thought they were done, like, pretty... Pretty well, and it was fun to see these kind of each of these like stupid losers. That was my favorite bit, and I wish they had more of that. Which was how the superpowers had fucked up their lives because Klaus and Alice, those those two, had really the superpowers had affected their lives in a real way. He'd become a drug drug addict, and she'd lost her child. Like those are two really like quite dramatic things to happen to people. Yeah, and I would love to have seen more of that. Um, but. I guess it did, like um, Luther, it affected him, like the way he oh, like, when yeah. he ended up on the moon. And yeah. he finds out that all of his moon mail yeah. that he's been sending to his dad is just like hidden in the floorboards yeah. throughout the entire Unopened. house. Oh. And then when like the dad, they see the dad in the afterlife and he's like, oh yes, it wasn't oversight. <laughs> I should have burnt it. And Cass yeah. is like, you are a fucking asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, dad. <laughs> No, I liked it. I like that. That that was my favorite bit. Was and I, that I just wish it was more about more about that. Yeah. Do you have any final closing statements? Do you have a favorite favorite sort of thing? I like. I really like Pogo. He was in it more than he was in the comic. He he gets killed off quite earlier on. Okay. And it's just he's killed off by like um, bad guys that aren't even in the Netflix <laughs> series. <laughs> so it feels like. You know, at least he was in it longer and he, he died to an actual villain. Mm. So that was good. Uh, yeah, Elaine Page, I quite liked her. And I I liked her in the tuxedo. That was great. And then a tuxedo magically turns <laughs> yeah. white. Yeah. That's the other power she has. Yeah. And the violin turned white as well. Yeah. The white violin. That's cool. I think it's a pretty good ad- adaptation. And, you know... It really did sort of meet my expectations. But was it good as a standalone product? Yeah. It was really enjoyable. It was 
considering there were so many characters and so much complex shit going on, it made enough sense and there were enough of like character arcs and story arcs that it felt like it almost justified it being 10 hours. Yeah, it is, yeah. A, it is a good point that there was so much going on and I was still able to follow it. Like, yeah. it was, with, with the amount of time travel, the amount of characters, the amount of side plots, still always knew what was happening, which is, which is good. Yeah, because yeah, you Impressive. can so easily lose track of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has been the, I guess, movie movie dungeon, unless yeah. the name is now different. No, sure. Your socks don't match. What a oh, fucking they're disgrace. All, they're also inside out. It does not. Okay. Um, so there was a lot of weird mannequin stuff in the Umbrella Academy. A why? Why well. did we not talk about that at all? Well, so Simon was like warned us beforehand, just like don't talk about mannequins. Yeah. Why was that? And we did well. We know now. What the fuck, Simon? Simon, what? Get